Thank you, Peter. Wedgie you're, brings me back to junior high school <laughs> and the football team. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th I'd like to thank the society and also the organizers of this uh, course for inviting me to, to speak. These are my disclosures. SeaWorld is a new one. It's, <laughs> we'll take money from any source if it's a reasonable. Now, we just heard the, the, the dilemma is that you have large sessile polyps that uh, the endoscopist uh, sends your way and says they, they, they can't get it out. And uh, they often will do that because of the size, location, or shape. And I should add another category, which is economics, that there's no reason for them to want to do these things. So you have to be very careful about some of these supposed very large polyps, maybe something one can get out uh, endoscopically without too much difficulty. But for these, these large polyps, traditionally the segmental resection has been the, the way to go, and we've, that's already been established here. The problems with segmental colectomy for a benign problem is that the, you know, there is a morbidity that, that goes along with that in terms of both mobilization-related problems, uh, bleeding, also uh, later adhesions, anastomotic leak, and in our large series of 380 patients who had this, uh, this problem who went to surgery, we had one death. So, I mean, there is a small mortality as well. So, if, if possible, you want to avoid colectomy. The alternatives are the, uh, uh, what we just heard from, in terms of from Dr. Sang Lee, and the uh, lap-facilitated snare polypectomy done colonoscopically in the OR. The ESD EMR, which you're going to hear about after I speak, is, I think, that the, uh, probably the, the best uh, solution if, if we can do it because it's a fully endoscopic one. And then the last resort, well not last resort, the second to last resort for polyps that are in, in, in a proper location, as I'll tell you, is the wedge resection, which I'm going to talk about. Our experience to date has been mostly with the ESD EMR and uh, uh, that method, and, and, and we have done uh, four or five wedges in our series of about 33 patients so far. But, so this is something that you, is an alternative for, for mainly lesions in the cecum. So what does this mean? A wedge means we take a, the full thickness of the bowel, but only part, part of the circumference. So you basically just take a, a corner of it. And the only place that really lends itself to that well is the cecum, where the ileocecal valve comes in uh, a bit further distal to the actual caput. So things in the caput, you might be able to remove this way. And the advantage is you, you avoid an anastomosis, and you avoid the full mobilization and the whole, the whole, uh, all the other problems associated with colectomy. So why do we do it? We do it to remove a benign lesion, and we want to avoid a segmental colectomy. Again, the cecum is the best place. The, the right colon can uh, also be uh, uh, wedged in, in, in certain instances because the di diameter is large, but other places don't work as well. Here's some, my, looks like an elephant or the uh, charging or rhino, <laughs> but it also is, it shows the cecum, and you see the polyp, and the idea is to save the, the valve and to uh, separate the polyp with a margin. Now, if you try to do this for, for something in the, in the right colon like this, if it, if it's, it, even assuming it's antibesenteric, you end up narrowing the lumen uh, appreciably. We've actually done this a few times, and, and what you end up with is a, is a very misshapen colon, and, and when you approach it endoscopically later to inspect the, uh, to, you know, just to do your endoscopy, it's hard to later uh, do your st typical screening. It's hard to look back on that wall behind the actual corner of the narrow part. So this is a thing we had not anticipated, and so we're not doing it for this uh, at this point. The, um, if you do it in the sigmoid colon, you can imagine. It's just way too narrow to be able to get a sizable polyp out without either getting the blood supply or leaving yourself with a very, very tenuous, thin lumen. So that's why the, I think that the wedge is, wedge is mostly applicable to the um, cecal area. So when can't you do it? You can't do it if, if, the, if the polyp is sitting right on the mesentery. If it's on the mesenteric aspect, you, then you're not going to be able to do this. If the polyp is close to the ileocecal valve, uh, then, or it's on the valve, then again, you're, you're not going to be able to do it without taking the valve itself. And that's something that you, you know, we can't do. So those are the, the situations where, where the location of the polyp may be a problem if, in terms of cecal ones. Also, if we're concern for, for there being a cancer if after we evaluate things we think that that's what's going on uh, in, in terms of your initial endoscopy in the OR, then you need to abandon that approach. Also, if you have an adenoma with high-grade dysplasia, this is something that uh, you may or may not be aware of, but there's this data, the best studies, one from our group and another from another large group, about 100 patients, ours was 400 patients, showed that those with, with um, 
high-grade dysplasia, uh, they have a, a 35 to 41 percent chance of having a cancer in the specimen at that time when you remove it. So that's too high a, a failure rate. So we think that those with, come in with preoperative high-grade dysplasia are best treated with a segmental resection. So that's our policy. Now, um, if you don't have dysplasia, if you should have a standard adenoma, there's still a 9 to 15 percent chance that you may have a cancer in that, in that specimen somewhere that has not been sampled with your preoperative biopsies. So how do you evaluate that? We've, Dr. Lee demonstrated very nicely the, the saline lift. If the thing will lift up, it implies that there is no invasion between the submucosa and the muscularis propria. So that's, that's a, a good sign. If it, however, if it does not lift, then you're worried that there could be invasion. The other problem with, with that test is, or the only problem, is, is that uh, if you have had previous uh, polypectomy attempts in that area, someone has used heat there, then it may not lift because there's just scarring, and so you don't know. And so in our series, many of the patients we could not get to lift, the lesions would not lift, we did resections, and none of them had cancers in it. But nonetheless, when you're using a new technology, you've got to be careful about how you apply it. Um, you can also use endoscopic ultrasound, and finally, after wedge resection, uh, it's important that you open the specimen up and do a thorough multiple frozen sections on this, both for margin and also to see if you have a cancer present so that you can change your plan and go ahead and do a resection if necessary. And this just shows the specimen stapled off and usually this lesion is very close to the, your staple line and, and you want to make sure that you've gotten that. So how do we approach patients with this? We tell them that their polyp will come out via one of three methods. If possible, it will be ESD, EMR. If not, and if the lesion is in the cecum, we may do a wedge resection. And if, if, if that fails, then we go to a standard uh, hemicolectomy. We, we do the OR, uh, in the OR, both the, uh, the endoscopy and the laparoscopy simultaneously, and we want to avoid a resection. The equipment is critical for this. You have to have uh, an OR that's, 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 that's comfortable doing endoscopy. You have to have a CO2 insufflation device, and you need to have staff. We have a separate nurse that comes in for this who's very comfortable with all these devices. Most of the nurses in the OR are not quite comfortable doing advanced procedures endoscopically, so you may need to get a nurse from the endoscopy unit to come over. Uh, and you've got to be able to use both simultaneously. We begin for a right-sided polyp by placing three ports. We look around, and we go immediately to the endoscopy. We do the saline lift when we get there, and we make a determination of whether we think it's possible. If we think it's, it's reasonable to proceed with ESD and EMR, we will go ahead and do that. If it's right on the valve, we may go right to resection. The, um, you know, the problem with doing ESD EMR in the right colon is that the wall is very thin. You're working as far away from the anus as possible, and you're, you're, it's hard to get your tip to, to do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, there's lots of difficulties. So we've only succeeded in a, a handful of cases on the right side doing an ESC, ESD or EMR type approach. Um, so wedge resection in that location for, for polyps is actually a good, a good idea. How do you identify the polyp endoscopically? I mean, I'm sorry, laparoscopically. Dr. Lee showed you, he, he gave dye at the very beginning and they went ahead and did their snare polypectomy. If you inject dye from the very beginning, which is something that's done by the Japanese uh, people and the, the, the GI guys often, the problem is that if, as you continue to renew the, the, your, your, uh, your lift, you end up spreading that dye mark so that it does not, you end up with a very broad, broad uh, mark. So here's your lesion, if you inject it early on and then do ESD EMR, you end up with something like this. And you have no idea where the lesion is. It's much too broad a tattoo. If you tattoo it just distal to the lesion, which is what often people will do, the GI guys, then what you see outside is you, you just see the two marks and you're not going to know where the lesion is either. Ideally, what, we've, what we do now is we, we do our ESD EMR attempt and when we give up, if we can't do it, we then place our four tattoos at the corners of the lesion at the end of it. And then, what we, then this way you see this, and you have an idea, a better chance of getting the, you know, wedging the thing out and knowing where it is. Because knowing where the polyp is on the outside is very, very difficult. And Jeff, Milsom, and, and Sang, and, and partners have, have, have a lot of experience with this, but it's hard for the rest of us. Now, what is the order of operation? Once you've decided to do the wedge, you, you identify the tattoo, which is critical. You leave your scope in. You're going to mobilize the cecum so you have that floppy. And then you've got to, uh, again, start to play with your stapler, try to put the stapler on around the, the, your, ta your tattoo, and you've got to avoid injuring or, or including with your stapler the ileocecal valve. Because it's, it's easy to, even though you may look like it looks fine from where you are without, by looking at the outside, you can actually be, be getting the inside corner of it. So this is the problem. 
is that you, you think it looks fine and the stapler is actually compromising the lumen. We had, in one case we did this, that ended up in a resection. And uh, what you want to do is before you put the stapler on, you put the colonoscope in the ileum and go in five, six centimeters and then you staple, you put your stapler on then. And then you, the stapler will not close on top of the, uh, on, on the, on the scope and it slides off to the side. Then you pull the scope back and see what you got. And that's not easy to interpret either. Uh, it's not easy, but that's a key point. Now, again, frozen sections are critical. If you get it out and you find unfrozen section, even dysplasia, if we find high-grade dysplasia, we're, we're inclined to do the resection. If we're not, if, because oftentimes, not oftentimes, but three times we've had uh, frozen sections showing us either benign or some dysplasia, and on the final pathology, if small foci have cancer. So I think if you find something suspicious or your margins are, are, are very, very short, then you need to either redo the wedge, which is very hard to do, or proceed to a resection. So to summarize, this wedge resection for select polyps allows you to avoid segmental resection. There's a limited application. It does require equipment and staff, and you can't just do this on the fly. You've got to really plan it out and, have, and, have, and, and be playing around with this. And you need to start by doing saline lifts and doing simple, for every polyp you remove endoscopically, do a saline lift. It makes it safer, you get used to doing it, and, and you'll, you'll be, the, the elements that you need for this more complicated procedure you'll get. Um, Again, not everything, every lesion is amenable, and you have to have the patient's consented for all three. The, um, or protect the valve. It's critical that you put the scope in the ileum before you put the stapler on, in my opinion. Uh, and you want to also then verify that it's fully removed. And again, your threshold for going to a standard segmental resection has to be very low. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, yeah.